All right. Hello, sports fans and baseball fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And today I am here with a college buddy of mine, Mike Buccolo, who is a big Mets fan. And we are going to talk a little bit about the Mets upcoming year, a little reflection back on last year, and then we're going to talk about the new rules for 2023. So, Mike, welcome to the show. Thank you. Great to have you. And uh, this is his first time on the channel. And uh, I guess to start off, a little reflection back on the Mets last year. Um what were your impressions of uh, last year and how that went? Well, I think that overall, very good season. I think they overachieved quite a bit. At the same time, I think that they uh, they were in first place for a very, very long time. But at the same time, they started pretty strong, but they didn't finish. And I, I think some of the things that affected them were – um, the pitching, um, I, I, there was a lot of inconsistency at the end. And I think the turning point of the season was the uh, the Brave series that they couldn't even pull out one game. And then uh, as we talk about Jacob deGrom, um, he lost two big games against the Braves. So he couldn't he couldn't even um, come come through in that way. And I think that, Overall, to getting back to DeGrom, I think that uh, he was overshadowed by uh, Scherzer. And I think Scherzer was showing a lot more passion and uh, a lot more. He was relentless at times, even though he didn't perform well in the playoffs. But, uh, you know, overall, it was a good year. And uh, I think we have the foundation to move forward and uh, see what happens. I mean, uh, you can look good on paper, but... It, we all know that uh, Mets have looked good on paper before, and yeah. uh, and it's uh, been a, it's been a struggle. So you uh, you lost to Grom in free agency, but you replaced him with Verlander. What are your feelings about that? He's about your age, Bob. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Tim and Scherzer. <laughs> you know, and uh, um, and uh, I. Listen, I, I'm all for the presence of uh, having a veteran in there to groom some of the pitchers and uh, to get, you know, to get the, the pitchers on the right track. I think that uh, bringing a winning presence to, to uh, the team is also a very, very big deal. Uh, I don't think the Mets have anyone besides Verlander and Scherzer I think that they're the two pitchers that have won World Series before. I don't know what other players have won World Series on the team. I don't think that there's many. Um, so the winning, the winning, um, the winning uh, mentality, I think, is really, really big for the team to move forward. That's for sure. And uh, one thing I like to add with Buck Showalter, Buck Showalter has had a lot of bad luck in his career. You know, we go back to 1995, Edgar Martinez. Um, they end up losing to the Seattle Mariners the next year. Guess what? The Yankees won the World Series in 2000. You know he, um, you know he gets uh, he gets uh, let go by the Arizona Diamondbacks in 2001. Guess what? The Arizona Diamondbacks won the World Series. Right. So he's had some bad luck. So as Dusty Baker would say, he's due. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, so. We'll see. You know, it's been a long time coming. Hey, listen, when I met you in 1991, we were only, you know, five years from the World Series. Now we're talking, uh, right? Uh, what, 37 years? Yeah, <laughs> it's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah, I was 13, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting on my dad's lap. <laughs> right. So. <laughs> So, uh, the upcoming year, you pretty excited about that? You think the Mets are going to do well this year? Uh, I'm, well, with the, as we get to the new rules, I think the shift, um, you know, the shift is kind of like, I know that they're saying it's eliminated, but it's still, you know, I think it's going to increase the offense quite a bit. Um, I think you're going to see a lot more base hits. I think you're going to see uh, a lot more steals. 
um, with the bigger bases. Uh, you know, they're they're trying to revamp the game quite a bit. Whoever thought that we were going to have instant replay, we were going to have all these rule changes in baseball. Yeah, I never, I never thought I was gonna. I, we were going to see that, and I'm sure you didn't. So, no, I mean, a lot of so, the things I, I think baseball's in a lot of ways. I think it's gone in a, in the wrong direction, but right. um, but with the um, talking about the um, uh, the shift going away, the one thing about the shift is that you can still shift outfield. So if you want to do that type of a shift on a pull, a left-handed pull hitter, all you got to do is bring the left fielder over to right field and you essentially do the same thing. And, you know, and these hitters, they're not going to hit the ball to right field. That, that left-handed hitter or to left field, that left-handed hitter is not going to hit the ball to left field. He'll still try to hit it, pull it to right and try to get a home run. Yeah, unless you're one of those premier hitters that know what the heck they're doing. McNeil may be able to do that for the Mets and some yeah. people, you know, some people, you know, have a very, are very good at situational hitting. Um, and, uh, you know, I really don't see, I, I don't understand why some, they just don't drop a bunt. Yeah. You know? And I, I still Sometimes that them. side of the field was totally nobody there. Mm -hmm. All you had to do was bunt the ball down the line. The Absolutely. only player who would have a chance of getting the ball is the pitcher, and many times the pitcher would have had to grab the ball and make a bullet throw to first base. Right. It's hard for a lot of the pitchers to do. So, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I think that the, the definitely the pitch clock um, is something that they should have probably implemented before even instant replay, I think. Yeah. Um, the games are way too long. We all know that. Um, mm -hmm. And... Uh, there's a you know, I, the 15 seconds with uh, no one on base, and then 20 seconds with with someone on um, the the limited throws to first base. The um, the batters uh, the batter only having eight seconds once uh, the pitchers come set. If he doesn't engage with the pitcher, he gets a strike called on him. So there's a lot of there's a lot of things, and I'm I'm a little concerned with the how pitchers are going to adapt to it. And I think that there's a lot of teams out there that I've watched that have had uh, quite a hard time yeah. um, getting, getting this, uh, getting this uh, into a comfort level. Um, right. But I think that, uh, I think that that's going to play into the minds of a lot of hitters and the pitchers and, and Scherzer is trying to use it to his advantage. And I know that he's trying to, um, I wouldn't be surprised some quick pitches um, yeah. being thrown. I, I wouldn't be surprised trying to catch the, catch the, the batter off guard. Um, and there's some pitchers that work very, very fast, and sure as there's one of them. Yeah, so, there was – one of the pitchers they were talking to said that at first it was kind of weird for him because he thought he had, like, almost no time, and then he figured out after a little while that he had a lot more time than he thought he had. So yeah, it's going to take them at least spring training and probably into the season to get used to it. Correct. Correct. I, I think that I think that there's going to be some games that that are going to be decided by these rule changes. I really I really do. And uh, I mean, one of them was uh, a good example. I know it's preseason, but the Braves, the Braves ended up uh, losing a game on. Uh, they called the strike on the yeah. batter. And uh, I think that I think that overall, this is going to be getting into the level of comfort. Um, I know that they're trying to speed up the game. I know that they're trying to have a, a more offense to the game. I understand all that, and uh, you know, um, I'm just hoping uh, I'm just hoping that it um, it doesn't take away from the game as well. So yeah, we'll see. And um, also with the bigger, you've got the combination of the bigger bases. Yep. And the um and the fact that the pitcher can only throw over twice that might lead to more base steals. Oh yeah, absolutely. So that'll be yeah. that'll be fun to see if if that's what it results in. Well, uh, well, we'll see. We'll see what it does. Um, yeah. I think that it's a, a very very big change to the game. It really is. I mean, yeah. especially the pitcher looking at that big clock winding down. <laughs> 
Right. That's pretty, you know, you don't even need your glasses on them for that, Bob. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you don't, you don't even need to put yeah. them on. Yeah. So, uh, um, uh, overall, overall, I think it's it's great that they're trying to speed up the games, and uh, I, I I really I really do, and I, and uh, I mean you still have the instant replay that uh, that plays a big part into the game. Hopefully they they speed that up too. <laughs> yeah. So you know, and uh, but overall, overall, I feel I feel good about it, um, and uh, I'm kind of glad that the Mets passed up on them, and. Uh, you know, and now we're, you know, we're, we're creating a foundation with Buck Walter, and I'm hoping that, you know, the same thing that happened to Dusty Baker happens to him, you know, because, right. I mean, I said that there are times of charm, so I'm hoping that, uh, you know, he ends up winning a World Series with us, you know. It's and been it helps that you, uh, you know, you got Cohen there who's willing to throw money around to anybody and everybody, so. You know, and just wanted to let you know, Bob, Buck's my dad. <laughs> 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 so um yeah well cohen it, well you made a a really really good a uh, good example of it and uh, as over the years uh the talk the the talk was george steinbrenner it's george steinbrenner didn't uh, right didn't hold back on anything and i mean i was telling my friends who were yankee fans all for all a long time let him take over both teams <laughs> you know because yeah the will ponds just um they didn't want to do anything they didn't uh, want to spend the money. Of course, let's blame Bernie Madoff for uh, the big disaster and uh, and all that stuff. But at the same time, Steve Cohen has come in. He's a big fan, um, and uh, he's willing to spend money. Um, he's he's trying to um, he's trying to find the right people in place. Uh, I mean, he, he misses catching. Um, and third, third base is still undecided, but their catching is uh, a definitely. I mean, somebody that really knows how to work the pitchers. I don't know if Nito and uh, what is this guy's name, Alvarez, I believe his name is. I'm not really sure. The other catcher, the the young catcher that they had that they brought up, um, and then they have another one, I believe. Uh, I I don't know his name off the top of my head, but. Uh, I think catching is one of their biggest weaknesses. I think you know they don't have anybody that can hit. For power, uh, what the Nito hit two home runs last year? I don't know, but uh, you know, it's well, how, uh, we, how are they defensively? Because I mean, even if they're good defensively, that could... well, well, third base, third base to me, I haven't. You can't really uh, judge uh, Brett Beatty um, really much because you really haven't seen him play. I think right. hit a home run his first to bat, and uh, he got hurt. Um, what? A couple games later, um, he got hurt. Eduardo Escobar had um, had spurts here and there. I don't think that he's the answer. Um, you know, uh, Francisco Lindor made his errors at the shortstop when he's playing on his game. You know, he had definitely had a better year uh, last year. Yes, um, he did. Um, you, uh, who's going to be in? Uh, who's going to be at second base? Is it going to be McNeil? Or are they going to platoon? Uh, are they going to, you know, use McNeil in left field as well? If, if he's going to be permanently in, uh, in uh, at second base, you know, you got Guillaume. You know, he's he's a sputtering hitter as well. Um, but I think Pete Alonso came in, lost a few pounds, and uh, he looks pretty good. He looks like he uh, he's ready to go. Yeah. Um, one one thing that I'm concerned about is Starling Mar Marte, um, and uh, I'm hoping that he's a big piece to the puzzle. But mm -hmm. uh, bringing back Nemo and uh, McNeil, I think, uh, plays a big part in uh, the Mets' future because uh, they're young players, and uh, Francisco Lindor is going into pretty much his prime. I think he's uh, 30 or 29, 30. Um, so. It's going to depend. It's going to depend on on the veterans that have been there. I think Nimmo is a is a great player. I think he's one of the most positive things that the Mets have. Um, and uh, the outfield, you know, Canna, pretty decent year, kind of faded off at the end. Um, but uh, I think Marte, that right field, that right field is going to be a really really big piece. And I'm hoping that uh, I'm hoping that he comes back. But uh, we'll see how they fill that void. But uh, I think that their offensive output last year kind of died at the end. I mean, they yeah. couldn't do anything against the Braves. I think they only scored a couple runs here and there. 
and they couldn't win a game. They couldn't win a big game. You know, so, I, I expect this video will do very well because, as we all know, there are more Mets fans than any other <laughs> baseball team in the League Baseball. You're never going to let me live that down. The fact, 19, what was that, 1993. I believe 1993. I still have uh, I still have that uh, you know little quote that you wrote in my yearbook. You know, Casanova. You know, so that's going to be an antique now that Kaz is closed. So. Right. By the way, yes, I wanted to mention that Mike and I went to Casanova College, which will no longer exist. So we have so, degrees from a college that doesn't exist. Anymore. Lots of lots of good times. Lots of good times. <laughs> right. <laughs> With the salt on the pretzels. <laughs> <laughs> More importantly, with the Mets. Um, uh, all right. Hopefully my wife answers that phone. So, um, but hopefully with the Mets, it's, it's going to be, um, it's going to be, it's going to be determined whether or not we're going to have, you know, um, players that are going to step it up. And uh, I think that one of the biggest losses was the Grom, but I, I wasn't so disappointed about the Grom because I think that Scherzer brought more life to the team than the Grom did. So um, yeah. I think Scherzer, Scherzer, at times, I thought he was going to kill somebody if they weren't, if they weren't going to step it up. So yeah. um, that influence that he provided to the team, I thought that that was a big spark. And uh, as as you know, it, it, it only takes one person to make a big difference. And I think Buck did that. Um, um, hopefully they don't get hit 250,000 times like they did last year. I mean, they were the most hit team, hit by pitch team. I thought that Buck Showalter was going to kill somebody yeah. every time, every time somebody got hit. But uh, I think I think Scherzer took away the limelight from uh, from the Grom, and then he went to Texas, probably thinking, "Hey, you know what? I'm going to be in uh, in in Texas, and probably I'm going to be the star pitcher and the ace of that staff." So, um, and uh, I, like I said, the the concerns that I have, um, not to sound redundant, is uh, third base and catching. Yeah. I think everywhere else we're kind of strong, but uh, the third baseman, the third base position. And I think that Brett Beatty, if he really puts his mind to it and he really works hard, I think he could take that job away from Escobar. You know, unless he decide to play a platoon. I know that Escobar is a switch hitter. Um, and uh, I know Brett Beatty is a um, left-handed batter. But uh, I, I strongly believe that, But you know, Beatty can probably take that position away from him. So Yeah, it's possible. You know, so we'll, we'll see what happens. But uh, overall, Overall, uh, I'm I'm hopeful. <laughs> That's all I can yeah. be. Yeah. You know, I can't I can't keep saying always oh, next year because I'll be 90 and probably I'm a, I'm a death bed by then. But uh, you know, but it's been a long time, 37 years, you know, and counting. So, but uh, I haven't been to City Field in a long time. So I'm hoping that I can get there to see the Tom Seaver statue. I heard they did a very a very good job with that. The thing with Degrom is he's he's an injury time bomb. Oh so, yeah, uh, and Texas might find that out. If he only pitches ninety innings, that's not going to help them a lot. Well, you got to look at it this way. Sometimes pitchers don't want to swallow their pride, and they don't want to tell tell the trainers that they're hurting. And uh, when he had that, I believe it was the elbow soreness back in, uh, I believe in twenty one. Mm -hmm. um, he 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 didn't really tell anybody that he was uh, hurt. So he just, you know, he just downplayed it. And guess what? He ended up being out for over a year. And I don't, I, I kind of agree with the Mets to, to make them an offer that uh, um, based on what do you pitch 15 games in yeah. uh, what a year and a half, two years to, for him to be signed to uh, what? $185 million. I, I, I just didn't agree with that. I mean, I know that the, um, the Texas Rangers, I, I think, are giving him incentives um, for the amount of innings that he's pitching. I, I understand all that, but right. you know, if you succeed in New York, Bob, you know, it's the best city. You know, it's the best city to play in. You know, it's uh, you know the fans are, of course, are crazy, but we're yeah. passionate about that. But for him not to want to stay in New York and to go to a team that 
God only knows, I mean, unless they have a, a crazy year, may not win the World Series with him, you know, so unless they build around them. And, uh, yeah, you know. I, I can't see Texas winning the World Series, not this year. No. And now with the new schedule, we know that Texas will play the Mets as yes. every team will play every other team. Exactly. exactly. You know, the, the Mets, uh, I believe it's 46 interleague games that they're going to be playing. So it's uh, – um, it's pretty um, – it's going to be pretty intense, you know. So, uh, you know, we're going to see – so I don't know how many games they're going to be playing against the Yankees. They usually play four against the Yankees. So I don't know. Um, you're talking about, you know, so 46 – so I guess it's it, – there's going to be some games where it's going to be just a, a series of, for one team. So, like, if we play Texas in Texas – Maybe next year we'll play the uh, Texas will play the Mets in uh right in City Field. So you yeah. know. But I, I believe it's thirteen games against your divisional teams, thirteen games each. And then it's I wanna say fifty fifty eight team of fifty eight games with the other um in the same league, and then it's forty six. You know, I don't know if I have my math my math right, but I know it's thirteen games. Uh, the Mets will play against their own division. So uh, who knows Who knows what, how that's going to play out. But um, I believe, uh, you know, when we were, you know, back in the day, we used to play 18 to 19 games, I guess, uh, against each divisional. So, the, you know, that that pretty much determined uh, the race. But now, now it's going to be um, a different path. So you may not be chasing, you may not, you may play a team and uh, you may be done with the Phillies maybe in August. Who yeah. knows? Could so, be. Yeah. Uh, you know, I haven't, I haven't really looked at the schedule. I don't know what the end of the season is going to look like, but like I said, uh, the Braves series last year, I think it was uh, the next to last series for the Mets and, and uh, that ended up determining their fate. Um, and uh, they were in first place for probably most of the season. I think till the end of uh, uh, the last uh, the last uh, week of the season, mm -hmm. uh, I think that that was when uh, first place changed hands. But I'm hoping that they put the uh, you know the pedal to the metal and uh, and see what we can do about you know riding the ship and getting it getting a yeah. World Series win. You know, I don't All right. well. of, an almost World Series. We're so, we're running out of time here, so okay. I just want to say thanks, Mike, for being on the channel, and uh, we'll we'll get this video up and let people uh, let people see um, different fans' opinions of the rules changes and uh, and how they all think their teams are going to do in twenty twenty.